right, okay, so uh, back to this again. Let's go through, and I'm going to organize a couple things and get the window set up a little bit better. So that way I'm not making a mess of everything as I go further along and start jumping back and forth between a bunch of windows and you guys get lost. So I'm going to first rename that character to the proper spelling. And doing that sooner is better than later, so that way I'm not going to crash and lose all my work. And speaking of crash, since I got all these stars, let's save out this project. So I'll do the save icon and I'll do a save all to be absolutely sure, and I want to save all of this. Alright, so what I'm going to set this up is I'm... I'm I'll do it through the tabs up here. Usually I always like to go from like the most relevant from the left to like the parts or the blueprints that inherit to the right on uh, when it comes to being ordered in tab. So I'll open up the example map game state that we made and I'm going to put this one all the way to the left because this is kind of like the overall, it's kind of like a level blueprint but it's not. And that was another thing too, is this does not need to be run. I'm gonna, we're gonna make this to where it's completely independent of the level. So if you made five other levels, you could easily take this character and just drop this guy into any level and he would run just fine with his blueprints too. That's our goal for this. Uh, let's grab our action interface and I'm gonna move that next to the example map because I might need to access again, which I, I will. Let's do this character swap pawn that's next to the action interface which is fine and our primary character that we are going to build off of so our character has a lot of the base controls that starts with for uh, blueprints and nothing in our character spawn okay so let's go through and let's organize this up a little bit more so we don't get lost and we can better read this in case we hand this off to other people uh, I'm just gonna make a quick comment box for this section down here I'm just going to name this the spawn additional characters near player. Start. Alright, so I think we're good there. Let's jump over to... I'm going to jump to my first tab to take a look at the level again. Because I usually always like to look back and forth between the level and going into blueprints. And let's start setting up our initial code for our character. So in our character, our primary character in his blueprint, I'm going to set up this section up here to be the, uh, the swapping functionality. So I know we're going to need a input action. I can either do this two ways or I can do, I can do one, which is always quick for testing. I can just do a keyboard event as tab or some kind of key, or it can be a little bit more proper and say this is going to be part of a functionality in a game. So I want to go into my project settings, come down to our inputs, and go into our action, our action mappings. And I want to go ahead and add another action. And this new action, I'm going to call this the character swap. and let's assign this tab like we did it before but it's a little more proper I would say since we're now using actual gamepad controls so easily enough our gamepad we can just call this character swap oh, get a little ahead of myself there and there is our action interface which we don't need we want this one. Oh, sorry there we go so we can type in input character swap and that should get a button, our button that we assigned within our uh, input, our inputs for our project settings. So first thing that needs to happen when we push this key is we want to spawn a actor and that actor we're going to spawn is our action, in our, uh, excuse me, is there going to be our character swap on the uh, Let's rename that too. I'm sorry about that, but it's just like some of these names I pronounce and I don't keep things. I, I don't keep things a little too consistent if I keep doing that. So let's just call this, let's rename this the character. Instead of character swap pond, we'll just call this the character swapper. It might be spelt wrong, I don't know, but it's a little bit more easier to, easier to remember. Okay, hopefully there's no more redoing any, any naming conventions or anything like that. So 
moving on I'm gonna go and we need to spawn this we need to spawn the character swapper when we push this key so again we can spawn actor from class at the top from game and we need to get our character swapper and our transform that we need is we are going to we're going to spawn this transform we're going to spawn this actor in the place of our follow camera so the camera that follows our third person character around we can drag that right off the uh, components tab or the components list and from this component I need two things for placing the camera swapper in the correct position I need to get the world location and I also need to get the world rotation of this camera alright so from that information that we get from this camera we need to turn this and we need to make it into a transform so we can drag off either the world location or rotation do a make and we'll tell us to make a transform our new location and from this we want to keep the scale and let's just add that plug it right into the transform for this spawn actor so when our camera swapper spawns and whenever we push the tab key it'll spawn inheriting the world location and rotation of our follow camera for our character now dragging off of our the next oh, excuse me the next thing we're going to need to do is when this character spawn when this actor spawns in the level we want to stop using the current character we have and we need to inherit this movement of the camera swapper or the character swapper so we can do a possess and it's not going to show up dragging off the return value um, instead let's try something else let's first we need to get get the player pawn From getting the player pawn, we need to find out who is the controller. So what this is telling is this is now the new pawn that we're going to be getting inherited by and it's going to, wherever it's moving, that's the controls of it technically, even though there's going to be no input from the player going into the control, into the camera swap, the character swapper. So we should be able to pull off a possess from here, and we can. So from the possess, we can drag into our next state, and our return value, we can go to end pawn. So this should now completely dislodge us from using our current player character and allow us to be into our spawn actor. And we can do a quick test by, let's do a print string for debugging. and so let's call this I am the swapper and compile it save and let's jump back to the first tab and take a look at the viewport again so let's play it now if I hit the tab key I should probably spawn yep I am the swapper and I have no more control over my character so technically we are in the camera swapper right or the character swapper pawn right now so let's go back to our primary character again continue working from here let's delete that debug and what we need to do is we need to now now that we are no longer playing as a character we need to send out a message to our character swapper that hey we are in we are technically you now so we need you to do something and that and that's where the uh, interface is coming to play so let's call in our uh, swap character and we are sending a message and there's that mailing system I was kind of referencing earlier where you're sending out a letter to be received by someone else and when somebody else receives that they're going to go ahead and execute whatever they gotta do it kinda acts like what most people would use as event ticks or delegate it that's what it takes a place over to event begin play so our target needs to be the actual pawn that we that we were spawning over here the character swapper and the character camera so what this is telling is what is the camera that is currently being used well it's going to be the follow camera of this character so let's drag and plug that in 
and that's going to carry over this component into the character swapper and at this time I believe we can go ahead and add that bool that we were talking about earlier that I mentioned earlier I'm sorry what I mean for the bool is we're going to be telling this thing hey we're switching to character 2 and this is true if we're in character 2 and we switch back to character 1 that bool is going to be false because we're not switching to character 2 we are character 2 we just need to become character 1 or the primary so let's jump into our action interface and let's go from our interface we'll go ahead and add that new bool and switching to character 2 let's compile and save I believe that's the last time we need to be working within the interface so back in our primary character let's take this and switch it to true compile and save and at this point we should be done with what we need to do for our primary character to execute the functions that we need so if people are more into not watching videos and need the screenshot this is your functionality within your characters graph I'll try to make some screenshots of this and post it elsewhere if I can and let's get a comment box in here for organization reasons let's comment this the uh, swap character alright 